In this video, we look more closely at the formation of ions and how ions come together to form ionic compounds. We'll start by reminding ourselves that ionic compounds consist of positively and negatively charged particles called ions. The positively charged ions are called cations and the negatively charged ions are called anions. And these cations and anions are arranged in a solid three-dimensional semi-infinite lattice of alternating positive and negative charges. Ionic compounds are characterized by ionic bonds, which are electrostatic attractions that result from particles of opposite charge, and they consist of metals bound to nonmetals or metals bound to groups of nonmetals. Ionic compounds are also called salts, and the most common example is sodium chloride, more commonly known as table salt. Iron 2 sulfide is another example of an ionic compound, more commonly known as fool's gold. And finally, sodium hydroxide is also an example of an ionic compound more commonly known as caustic soda, which we use as a drain cleaner. In this example, we can see that the metal sodium cations are combined with anions formed from a group of nonmetals, namely the hydroxide ion OH- consisting of oxygen and hydrogen atoms bonded together and with a net electrical charge of minus one, with the overall formula being NaOH. So let's take a closer look at ions that make up ionic compounds. We've seen that atoms are electrically neutral. They contain the same number of protons and the same number of electrons, and so overall have no net electrical charge. It turns out, however, that the electron clouds surrounding the nuclei of most elements are unstable, and atoms typically need to lose, gain, or share electrons so that their electron cloud has an arrangement or configuration that makes it stable. For molecules and molecular compounds, we've seen that electrons need to be shared between these atoms to gain a stable electron cloud. In the formation of ionic compounds from neutral atoms, electrons are transferred between atoms. That is, some atoms lose electrons and some atoms gain electrons to form electrically charged particles that we know as ions. The process of ion formation is called ionization. Ionization can occur in two ways. The first involves the loss of electrons from a neutral atom to form a positively charged ion called a cation. The loss of electrons is referred to as oxidation, and we need to remind ourselves that it is metals that tend to undergo oxidation and lose electrons in chemical reactions. We can see an example of that here, elemental sodium being transformed to the sodium plus ion by the loss of a single electron. The 1 plus charge results from the fact that the neutral sodium atom starts with 11 protons and 11 electrons, and when it loses an electron, it still has 11 protons, but now only 10 electrons, which means that there is a net positive charge of plus 1, and re we refer to this as the Na plus ion. You should note that we don't write ones in chemistry, so we are not writing Na1 plus, it's just Na plus. The second major way that ionization can occur is by gain of electrons to form negatively charged particles called anions. The gain of electron is referred to as reduction, and it is typically nonmetals that undergo reduction and gain electrons in chemical reactions. We see an example of a nonmetal here, a chlorine atom, gaining one electron to become the Cl minus ion. The one minus charge here results from the fact that a neutral chlorine atom has 17 protons and 17 electrons. When it gains an electron, the atom still has 17 protons, but now has 18 electrons, which means that there is a net negative charge of minus 1, and we refer to this as the Cl minus ion. Again, remember we don't write ones in chemistry, so we don't write Cl1 minus, just Cl minus. It should be noted at this stage that ionization doesn't affect the nucleus at all, as ionization only involves the electron clouds, and electrons are lost or gained without changing the structure or composition of the nucleus. Now an ionic compound is a compound composed of cations and anions, and the strong electrostatic attraction that exists between opposite charges is responsible for holding these cations and anions together in a stable three-dimensional arrangement called a crystal lattice, such as is represented here for sodium chloride. Sodium chloride can be formed from the ionization of the individual elements sodium and chlorine. So for example, we can start with a neutral sodium atom. It can readily lose a single electron to form a stable sodium cation with a net electrical charge of plus one. A neutral chlorine atom can readily accommodate an extra electron in an electron cloud to form the chloride ion with a net electrical charge of minus one. Now, once electrons have been lost and gained or transferred, 
and the chemical change has occurred, the physical attraction of oppositely charged ions results in the formation of a solid sodium chloride crystal represented here. So just a few things for us to consider about ions, ionic compounds and ion formation. You should note that when an atom or molecule loses electrons, which is an oxidation process, it cannot happen unless some other substance picks up those electrons or gains them, which is a reduction process. It therefore follows that oxidation and reduction processes cannot take place independently of each other and that in fact they occur simultaneously. Now we should remember that electrons have a measurable mass and if one substance did not pick up electrons lost by another substance then this would actually violate the law of conservation of mass. If we look at the formation of sodium chloride just shown we can write the oxidation process showing sodium atoms losing electrons and we can write the reduction process where chlorine atoms in the form of the chlorine molecule gain those lost electrons and the overall reaction can be written here where two sodium atoms which lose an electron each react with the chlorine molecule which has gained those two electrons and produces two lots of the NaCl formula unit. Another thing to consider about ions and ion formation is that the noble gases tend not to form ions. The electron clouds of the group 18 noble gases such as helium, neon and argon are very stable and these elements tend not to gain, lose or share electrons and therefore tend not to form ions or chemical bonds. Another point worth noting at this stage is that cations are smaller than their parent atom while anions are larger than their parent atoms. This can be explained in terms of the Coulombic repulsion that takes place between charged particles of the same charge. For example, in the case of cations, when electrons are removed from the electron cloud, there are less electrons in that cloud and therefore less overall repulsion between the remaining electrons. As a result, the size of the electron cloud collapses. For anions, the opposite occurs. When a neutral atom gains electrons, there are now more electrons in that electron cloud and therefore a greater extent of electron-electron repulsion and this results in the size of the electron cloud increasing in size. And so we can see in this diagram here the size of the cation reported in picometers is smaller than the size of the parent atom but the size of the anion is larger than the parent atom. A final point worth noting about ions is related to the definition of what an ion actually is. An ion is an electrically charged particle obtained from an atom or chemically bonded group of atoms by the gain or loss of electrons. And what this actually means is that ions can not only be monatomic, meaning one atom, they can also be polyatomic, where an electrically charged particle is obtained from a chemically bonded group of atoms. And so we have a long list of polyatomic ions that we need to be aware of. And this table here shows just a few of some of the more important common examples of ions that have more than one atom. Most polyatomic ions are negatively charged anions, but we see an example of one of the most common polyatomic cations at the bottom, the ammonium ion. It should be noted at this stage that we have no hard and fast rules regarding the formation of polyatomic ions and so at this stage we are simply going to have to become familiar with some of the more common examples shown here, both in terms of their structure and their charge.